Hey guys, so uh, Akashi, Akash Joshi asks, It'd be really great if I could help creating a ship that moves around naturally with the arrow keys, floats on water, and also switches between a first person view where you walk around on the ship or controlling the ship. So that's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> first create a new project that is a 3D project. So underneath 3D, click on asset packages and include camera, character, and environment. And if you don't have those, go to Unity, Unity3D.com, get Unity, and on the download page, they have additional downloads that have standard assets right there. So download that if you don't already have it. You probably already have it, but just in case, download that. Yeah. If you don't have it. So you need cameras, characters, and environment. All right. So it's still, so we got our standard assets. We got a whole bunch of stuff already here in the project window. Again, if, if you don't have one of the windows that I'm using, go at the top and click window and you can find the name of, of it there. But, so we're gonna need even more than that. We need a boat. So let's go window asset store. and go to 3D models, uh, vehicles, C, and just grab a free, click on price, grab this, there's a fishing boat that's free. So this is the one that I used. So import that. <laughs> just click import. And close that. So that's everything you need to follow along. Alright, so first we're going to go into the hierarchy window, click create 3D object plane. And I'm going to click on the name and call it ground. And let's in the project folder, create folder materials and create a material and just call that ground and inside of the inspector window where it has albedo main maps albedo click the little circle and let's find a ground texture so here's sand sand albedo so I'll use that and then drag the ground material onto this ground and select ground in the hierarchy window and then in the inspector make the X scale 100 and the Z 100 and then open up the ground shader here and it's tiling, let's make that 100 by 100 so now we've got a ground okay and then we're going to go into the standard assets environment, water, water 4 prefabs and bring in we're going to drag water simple into the hierarchy thing make sure its position is zero 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 actually make the y one so it's up one and then scale that to 20x and 10z so now i've got if you click top down view it's the same size as the, the plane. So now we've got some water and also in the water simple, if you open it in the hierarchy, click on the first tile here, open this, click the arrow to open this water for a simple thing, scroll down, click on the base color and just make it more a color that you would want and reflection color just make like nice pretty water 
Okay. So now we got some water. Inside characters in the standard asset, there is a first person character. Open up prefabs. Or actually, first we're going to delete our main camera from the hierarchy. So we don't have a camera because this guy will have a camera inside of it. So FPS controller, drag that into the scene and press play. You can already walk around with WSAD, jump with the spacebar, you can run with shift. So it's just like a free built-in thing. So we got our person that walks around, so we can use that to walk around on the boat. So stop that. Okay, so now we gotta bring in the boat. So let's go hierarchy, create, empty, and name this boat, and put it at zero, one, zero. And then inside of the fishing boat folder that we added, there's this fishing boat model. Drag that into the boat and then select the, the fishing boat again in the prod project window and set the scale factor to 0.1 and press apply. Hopefully it's big enough. Bring your first person guy to where he can see the boat. Let's just see what, what this looks like. Oh yeah, okay we're good. We got a boat. Okay, so in the boat, we have to actually rotate this mesh in Y270 because it's not facing forwards. So the, the, the model that we dragged in, we rotated that, not the parent, not the game object parent. And yeah, so inside of this boat thing, I'm going to delete the fisher and click continue, break prefab. I'm going to delete this net too. And so we're going to need colliders actually. So right now the player is just going to walk straight through the boat. Water looks pretty. <laughs> player also click on FPS controller and then inside this player stuff there's height character controller height make that five so he's a bit taller now he's more of an appropriate size I think and now we need colliders for the boat so normally what you would do is you would select the model and you would go add component physics mesh collider and then that would give us this nice collider to for the character to walk on but the problem is that in unity 5 it has to be convex which this model is not designed for so we have this terrible shape that we can't really walk inside of so we can't use the normal mesh collider for this model. So what we're going to do is just go inside the boat and go create 3D object cube. I'm going to click on the top down view and I'm going to click this square in the middle to make it flat. And top left, I'm going to change it from shaded to wireframe so it's easier for me to see this. And just I'm going to click the scale thing in the top, so that now I can just by eye, I'll just scale these. Scale is something for me to walk on. It's not going to be like the best collision, but if you had a, a model that was made for this, you could do better. <clears throat> so whatever, we'll just 
work with what we got. And then I'm going to look at the side view, move this down a bit. Um, so that's our floor to stand on. Then I am going to right click cube. Cube is in, make sure cube is inside the boat. <laughs> right click cube, duplicate. And I'm just going to manually scale it and uh, go back to shaded mode. Where are wireframe mode? I'll just, and I'll switch to the arrow thing and move it over here. And then I'll make this one tall and move it up. And I'll duplicate that and move it in the X position to the exact opposite number. And then I'll duplicate the four again. Go to the top view, scale this for a wall up at the front. Up there. And I will take the height of the last one and copy that and paste it into this one. Or the scale and the Y position and the Y scale. Okay, and then duplicate this and move it back. So we have this wall, these walls to stop us from walking off the boat and move our player so that he's up in the boat. And then on each of these cubes, you can just hold shift and select all of them. Turn off, actually remove the mesh filter. And remove the mesh render. So the little gear is on here. So there's nothing there but its position and the uh, box colliders. So now they're invisible. <clears throat> so now I can walk around inside this boat Okay, so now I'm going to go to the boat and in its inspector, go add component physics rigid body. That gives it all its physics. I'm going to turn gravity off. I'm going to freeze its y position and its x rotation in, and its z rotation. I'm going to give it a drag of 1 and an angular drag of 1. And I'm going to make it is kinematic. So it's just frozen right now. So this is our, our walking around on the boat mode. Next we got to make driving the boat around. Okay, so now we're going to actually make the boat so that it is not kinematic, which means it can move around freely now. And the FPS controller, I'm going to uncheck that in the inspector so it's not enabled anymore. And we're going to go to the standard assets and go to cameras, prefabs, multi purpose camera rig, drag that in. And then on the boat, we're going to go to the tag and we're going to make sure that's tagged as player. I'm going to press play. Now the camera 
inside this multi-purpose camera rig there's a pivot so you can adjust that to where you would like it to be I liked it at 10 in the Y and minus 20 Z but when you have it where you like it click on that little gear and press copy component then press unplay and then go over back to it and press paste component values so now you have it in a nice spot so now let's make some code to make the boat drive around so I'm going to go to the project thing create a new folder called scripts and I'm going to create a C sharp script and just call it boat and then select the boat drag the script on open it up so we're going to need to have access to the, the boat's rigid body because <clears throat> we're going to use we're going to apply forces to the boat's rigid body and the rigid body is rigid body is all the physics and everything so we need access to that from the script to that so we're going to go have a private rigid body and we'll just call it our body and then inside the start we're going to say that our body is git component rigid body so what that does is it get all of these things are components so it the script is on this game object so it looks on here and finds one of the components that's a rigid body so now this is linked to it so now we want to get the input that we press so inside the update that happens every frame we're going to make a float which is just a number that has decimal points in it we call it h and say it equals input dot get access horizontal inside of quotations horizontal and then roughly the same thing but we'll do vertical so v vertical and if you type print h just to give you an idea if you don't know what this does you play it in the console window it's it's zero but when I press left it's minus goes to minus one and it goes up to one if I press to the right so we're getting we're gonna use that and multiply it for the steering <clears throat> and vertical obviously does the same thing but for up and down okay, so we're gonna need a turn speed and a an acceleration speed so we're gonna make those public so that they show up on the inspector so public uh, float turn speed and by default we'll make it a thousand F and then public float accelerate speed probably use a shorter word but whatever and then we are going to turn it so we're going to go the rigid body so our body dot add torque which is a rotational force and then it wants a vector 3 an x y and z so we're going to rotate it in y so x would be a zero then we would rotate it with our how much we're pressing left and right so that horizontal number multiplied by turn speed so how strong to turn it multiplied by time dot delta time which is just a thing that you always add when you're inside the update loop and you're adding things and then we also want to make the z zero so for moving forwards, we're going to go our body, so the rigid body, add force, 
which just pushes it a direction. Transform dot forward. So whatever direction we're facing, it's going to push us that direction. Multiplied by our accelerate. Well, multiplied by v, how much we're pressing forwards or back. Multiplied by accelerate speed. Multiplied by time dot delta time. So save that. And we press play. Actually, have the boat selected. And then you press play. We have the turn speed and the accelerate speed. So now I can drive forwards, I can drive backwards. I can turn, but I want to turn way faster, so I'm going to drag the turn speed way up, and try it. I like it way up high. I want to make it turn ridiculously fast, because <laughs> I don't, it's cool. And I'm going to do that for this too. I'm going to do 8,000 for both of them. But you can adjust it to whatever speed you want it to be. But I want my boat to be ridiculously fast. Yeah, so now you got a boat driving around. So once you have those at the numbers that you want, click on the gear and go copy component, and then stop click on the gear and go paste component values so that it saves them and because in the code we wrote it equals that way up here and we didn't do it in the start it's gonna stay at 8000 this is just the default if we never entered anything so now we need to switch between boat mode and walking around mode so inside the boat so select the boat and go create empty and let's call this, and make sure it's inside the boat. And let's call this game object player start position. Because when we play as the boat, the player doesn't actually move with the boat. So once we switch to the player, we want to put him back onto the boat right away. So we're going to use this object as like the location that he will start. And uh, if I have it selected, and I press Shift F, and then press Play, it will follow. The camera will follow that around. So you can see that since it's inside the boat, it moves wherever the boat moves. So we can use that position, that game object, as the position for the for the player to appear at. So let's create a game object. Just create an empty and call this one switch switch mode, I guess. And then inside our scripts, let's create a new C sharp script called switch mode. And let's put that on there and open that up. I'm also going to go file save because I haven't saved at all and go I'm going to create a folder called scenes I can't spell scenes inside there called scene 01 okay so we're inside switch mode so we're going to need a bunch of public game objects. So we're going to need to know where the we're going to need public game object boat public game object boat camera public game object player public game object player start position so inside the update 
we're going to make a set to boat mode and then we'll have like set to player mode or FPS mode. So we're going to go if input dot get key uh, one. So if we press one, do the stuff inside these curly braces. And then for the other mode, let's do two. So what we want to do in boat mode is set kinematic to false on the boat's rigid body so that it can move. And then in first person mode, we want to freeze the boat so it doesn't like slide around and move weird while the player doesn't really move with it and stuff. So we want to freeze the boat. So is kinematic basically just means the rigid body is paused, it's frozen. So we're going to go boat. Well, actually, first we're going to attach all these things. So let's just save this. And actually, let's go print I pressed 1, just to see if it even works. So print I pressed 1, I pressed 2. But just to make sure that's working in the console during the game, if I press 1, I press 1. If I press 2, so we know if we're pressing things. Whoosh. Amazing boat doing donuts. Okay, so, so on the switch mode, there's boat camera for the boat, the player, and the player start position. So we want to drag the boat onto boat game object, so now it's linked to that. We want the multi-purpose camera rig to be the boat's camera here, and the FPS controller is the player, and the player start position is inside the boat, just that game object that we made. So now those are all linked. So back inside switch mode, we need to set that thing to kinematic. So we need to go boat dot get component rigid body, just the same way that we got the rigid body before, but it's instead of get component just like this. This would be looking for a rigid body on this game object that this script is attached to. But since we wrote boat, now like it goes to the boat and then it looks for this rigid body. And then we found the rigid body and we go dot is kinematic equals false. So that is going to switch this is kinematic thing to off. And then, if we're in the first person mode, we'll do the same thing, but we'll make it true. So now we need to get another kinematic. So the boat controls, right? The boat has this script on it. We can turn that on and off too, and that's a component. So when that's on, we can drive around, right? But if it's turned off, pressing left and right won't do anything. So we're going to go boat dot get component and then instead of rigid body the boat script is called boat right we're using the script name to get that component so boat dot set or is or is it enabled boat dot enabled equals true because we want to control the boat in boat mode but if we're if we press number two for first person mode then we want to stop controlling the boat so it's false so then the boat camera so this multi we can only have one camera at a time or we only want to so we want to uncheck this 
So to, to make that switch off, we have linked to it, right? We linked to it. It's called boat camera in here. So we're gonna go boat camera dot set active uh, true. And then if we are not controlling the boat, we want to set that camera to false. So that'll turn it off. And then in boat mode, we want to turn the player, if he was on, we want to turn him off. So it's the exact same thing. Because <clears throat> we already linked to it with the player there, right? So player dot set active false. But if we're in the first person mode, we got to switch the player back on to true. And since we drove around with the boat, he's going to be off somewhere, so we need to move him to that starting position on the boat. So we'll just go player.transform.position equals player start position dot transform dot position so those are both linked to it right so where am I switch mode so the, the uh, player right right there and the player start position it just moves his position to this one his position on this transform Right, player dot transform. So this component right here called transform dot position and the x, y, and z. So save that. Let's try this. So I'm driving around as a boat. And then if I press two, I'm walking around as a person. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna go fishing or whatever. And then press one and we're back in the boat. Bam! We just made a boat, son. If you got stuck somewhere and your code didn't work, links below. You can download this entire project. I'm going to upload this whole project on Dropbox. So you can just download the whole project to your computer and then go file open project, like unzip it on your computer, go file open project, find the folder called uh, tut 2015 ship or whatever, and then open that. And then the only thing you might have to do is double click on scene one to open it.